Okay. Um, so some of the highlights, as we did in the last session, uh, you can dedupe on any object. It's not just for contacts or accounts. Um, we do have uh, some robust matching options, which you'll see. We have some rules that you can set to kind of auto-select the master record or the one that stays and not the one that gets deleted. Um, we also have a tool to match against an external file just to check to see what is in the system. Um, mm -hmm. So not just from internal records, but matching against something from the outside. Uh, and we have some uh, extra data cleansing tools available that come with this tool as well. So I'll go ahead and share screen now. Oh, Yana joined us too. Hi, Yana. Oh. So we are in uh, Epsona, we're in the contacts tab, and I'm actually gonna do a quick contact import. It's kind of a sneak peek into standard um, Epsona's base package. Um, and it's fast, so here we go. So I'm just going to import uh, a bunch of uh, records. I'm going to add them without checking for them just for the sake of the demo. Um, choose my data set and move on to the next. What's really cool about Epsona is when you validate the data, it tells you what errors exist, and you don't have to go back to the CSV and clean it up. You can actually update the data live from within Epsona. So I'm going to fix these email addresses that are bad. I have a contact without a last name, which is not allowed in Salesforce. So now I've cleaned those up. We're going to validate again. Great. And I'm going to, I'm about to put 200 new contacts in. So import. It's going to take a few seconds. Uh, I can download my results as an archive here. I'll go to the list in Epsona. So these are the 200 that I imported. Um, so now let's see if we have duplicate contacts in the system. So from the same tab, um, any object, you can go to the tools menu and go to dedupe and match. We're going to go to dedupe. The way that Epsona works is you can create different actions um, that use different uh, rules and different matching fields um, to find your duplicates. Uh, and a lot of times you actually need that. You need kind of an iterative process because sometimes there are duplicates where if you, you know, you make it a really tight a process where this has to match, that has to match, a whole bunch of fields have to match, and you feel safe just click and merge and making them go away. And then there's some sets where you really got to like go through it. And so you have very loose matches and then you actually review the data more closely, maybe do some manual editing um, and you, maybe you don't dedupe every single one. So Epsona allows you to save different um, scenarios. So I'm just going to quickly kind of walk through this, this setup um, that I've already got. Um, the first screen allows you to do just a general high level filtering. If there's a certain audience that you want to include, um, or exclude, you can set a filter here so that you're only looking at a subset of contacts. Um, I kind of want to just look at everybody. I have a small data set here, so I'm just saying create a data isn't empty. Um, you can, this is where kind of the power of, of matching comes in. So you can choose several fields. You can choose how, what field um, are you matching against? So uh, typically email last and first is, is a, a starting point for folks. Um, so you can choose these different match functions. Um, there's a lot of different ways you could match against fields. Um, exact is, of course, what you'd expect. Case insensitive will ignore upper and lower case. Um, so I have that set for last name. First name has its own dedicated um, match rule. So, uh, you know, Joe and Joseph will be matched together. Um, and then furthermore, we have these um, contractions that you can add. We have fuzzy lookups, alphanumerics only. Those are all described in this little help bubble so you can better understand what they would do and how they would make decisions. Um, but we're going to leave that as it is and move on to the next step. Additional fields is you're going to see the table in a second that's resulting from these um, these dupe matches. And so you want to put in all the fields that you would actually want to use to kind of make decisions. So um, beyond the fields that we're matching against, we also want to see mailing address. Um, I'll do uh, I'll do phone number. I'll throw that in. Um, and then the next table allows us to um, make even further kind of filtering decisions. So let's say that you want to match um, uh, a particular subset of contacts against the rest of the database. So here is where you can add a rule. So I think I might actually add one live. I wasn't thinking about doing this, but let's just try to say created date equals today, because I just um, created some. So, so what this says is, 
at least one of the records needs to be from a particular subset. So maybe you have a, a campaign with a bunch of members in it and you want to dedupe against that particular group. So you can say at least one of the records in the, in the duplicate sets needs to be of a certain criteria. So I'm kind of matching against my uh, particular import today. You can also decide um, how many records you want to see. So this can be used if you're trying to really just hit the dupes that are really easy, then you say, oh, I want to just find the folks where there's only two. It's really clean and easy. I can make a quick decision. Or maybe you want to find the groups that are really complex that have all kinds of, of duplicates that are going to show up in one group, and you can set your threshold higher. This last step is kind of the most powerful. So this is where you can set rules to say who's going to win. So I have, you know, if, ho if home phone is not null, they get a point. If their title is not null, they get a point because that represents better data. So if everything's the same except for those two things, then the one that meets the criteria is going to get a point. And you can stack up these points so that you get a score per uh, record and it'll, it'll help to make a decision of, of who wins. Um, there's a tie-breaking functionality to choose if all else is equal, what am I going to base my decision on? Um, we have uh, field level overrides. This is a really powerful one here where you could say if the non-master, the one that's that's going to be deleted, has a value and the master does not in a particular field, move that value over so we don't lose it. And then you can add other rules to take specific fields from the non-master if there's multiple non-masters to decide which of the non-masters kind of wins for this particular field. Um, and lastly, uh, this is kind of a concatenation station. <laughs> uh, this is basically combining values. So if you have descriptions that you use really heavily for certain records, you don't want to lose that historical data that staff has been adding. You can concatenate the two records as they're merged to keep all of the text available. This also works for checkboxes. If you have a checkbox that's true on the non-master, false on the master, it's going to bring that true over. OK, so let's go ahead and um, find our duplicates. Oh, and I'm getting 0, I think, maybe because of how I loaded this in. Let me just go back and refresh this. Or maybe it's because I put that extra rule in that I didn't practice on. Let me just double check this really quick. Let's dedupe. Go to this While one. While he's doing that, do, do any of you have questions so far? I'm going to pull this um, out. For the rules, um, for the rules for like which one is the master, um, uh -huh. Can those be related to other objects, like which one has, like if one has gifts or not, or is that all based on like a roll up field that like uh, that's on the account or on the contract that says, you know, most recent gift date or something like that? That is a great question. Um, it looks like it only has access to that object's fields. So okay. it would have to be based on a, on a roll up or something like that. Oh, okay. thank you. Yeah. OK, I think I, I was putting in that additional rule incorrectly. I just wasn't thinking about it. So I just got rid of it. And now I have several groups. So let's just talk a little bit about how this table lays out. Um, because of our rules uh, of, of which master to choose, you can see that Epsona has already pre-checked some as the winning records. And that's indicated by the checkbox. We got a green light. That means everything looks good for that set. We have a master. You can, of course, just manually change it to a different one if you've reviewed the data and you've decided just as a human reviewing it that you have made a better decision than the algorithm. Um, you can export this beforehand. You could either just export every record, every field in the in the records. I'll just export the grid data really quick, and you can see that it uh, it gives you the contact IDs. It gives you the score. This is kind of the the matching code based on the match rules that I threw in there: the email, the first, the last name, and this is how it kind of shows the group sets. So if you wanted to do some some review or you wanted to do some fancy work in Excel, you have all that data to work with. Um, you can also decide to bypass all of the rules that you've set up in the action and just do some good old fashioned manual um, merging. So like, for example, if I wanted to just manually merge this group, I can click this little button and this is called a custom merge. And this is more like what you're used to seeing in Salesforce where you have two records. You can choose the winning value on either side go through the data and hit merge. And this is going to purposefully ignore all of the rules about concatenating things and 
choosing which value comes from the non-master because this is dependent purely on your process. Um, so you can do that if you want on select records. Uh, if you feel like the um, the action is set up right and all these look like the, the right uh, decision for the master, then you could just hit merge all. You have some options on how to run merges. Sometimes you got a lot of automation in the background. NPSP, if you have that, sometimes causes trouble. So you can choose to use smaller batches. You can choose whether or not to use Salesforce's merge API. Um, there's little help articles here to kind of explain what those are about. This will probably take about uh, 30 seconds or so. Um, so I could we could take some more questions in the meantime, or we could jump back to Rob's slides. But I think this usually goes from zero to 100 when I test it out. So it should be done in just a second. Um, and then when this is done, I will have the ability to to download again the, the result file and see if there were errors that Salesforce threw that were unexpected, things like that. Okay, so completed without errors, 199 uh, um, records. I'll download these results and pull them up. So this is the, the post merge. And basically it just kind of tells us how we're doing here. So we had no errors. If we did, we would see an error in this column. We have the winning record ID, the, uh, the non-master record ID. So that's gonna be in our recycle bin. Um, you're of course welcome to restore it if you need to. And then um, I didn't have any related records, but if there were related records, those IDs show up here, which is kind of nice. And of course, all related records from the non-master are transferred over to the master. I think that is the end of what I wanted to demo. So I'll hand it back. Oh no, I want to do one more quick thing. Um, and that is to show the matching against the CSV. So I'm going to go back to the contacts tab I'm going to go back to dedupe, but instead this time I'm going to say match CSV. So this is just another way to approach this. Let's say that you're starting from an external file. I'll use my same demo file here. Um, this is a preview of the fields from your source file. You can go to next. Oh, I think I had a saved action. Did I? Uh, there we go. Demo CSV. So I, I previously uh, ran this match and I'm calling it up again. And by doing so, it has already kind of decided which fields I'm matching against, what are my match functions, all the kind of stuff that I already showed you. Um, and then when I go on to the next, this is the fields that I'm adding for review. Um, this is that, that overall filter to decide um, what population to include. And I'll go ahead and hit finish, download one more CSV for you to look at. And so what this has done is it has preemptively found matches in Salesforce from an external file. So here's that same signature based on the, the match fields that we talked about. How many um, records did it find that match? And then on the right side, after my original data, this is all the Salesforce data. So these are the people that they found. Here are the contact IDs. When they didn't find a match, it's a blank row. And so this is just a way for you to kind of do some more sleuthing before you were maybe to import, or maybe you don't even want to import. You just wanted to kind of like take a look and see what was going on. Um, this is a great way to do that.